This is Ethel. Wow, she's in pretty terrible condition. A bit of a scabby genetic mess, aren't you, darling? Her body shakes and she sort of really seems to be struggling to get just breath. breathe normally. Yeah. Any point when she's at exercise, she's going to struggle to get the amount of oxygen she needs. Ethel, as a case, just really upsets me. Why was she ever bred in the first place? Because the condition that she's suffering with is genetically inherited. She's suffering, so why would you spread that suffering to other puppies? Scott is meeting his first patient of the day in a North London park. Thank you, girl. Rowena is a foster carer from a dog rescue charity. Hey, Rowena. Hi there, Scott. And her latest charge is a young pug cross named Ethel. It's not scary. How's it going? You are right? always a little bit nervous of new people still, but... Yeah, and very noisy baby. <laughs> okay. It's very sad, but this poor little girl has come from a puppy farm, which doesn't surprise me because I can see her abdomen is quite baggy. It's clear that this very young dog has had multiple litters, and it's also very much at the hands of someone who's incredibly unscrupulous. It really is a travesty. It's really sad to see her so in like, such a bad condition, obviously, and she was much skinnier and had a lot less hair when she first came in as well. Luckily for Ethel and her sister and a few other dogs, they um, found their way to All Dogs Matter to find new homes. It was clear that she was in the worst condition with the mange and being so severely underweight. So she came straight into foster care with me. Ethel really isn't the picture of health. She's very thin, so she's probably had a very poor diet, but also her skin is really bad. And also it's very patchy where the hair has fallen out as a result of a mange mite infection. Well, it looks yeah. like you've got the mites under control, which is great. You can see some new hair growth growing back, but that's not her biggest issue, which I can now hear. Yes, yeah, so when you come closer, exactly, that's the first thing you sort of notice about her is that slight sort of grunty snort. But she really does struggle, and it sounds awful, even though maybe she doesn't show us that, you know, it is maybe difficult for her. So at rest, she makes this much noise. Yeah, but... her body shakes, and she sort of really seems to be struggling to Get just breath. breathe normally. Yeah. yeah, well, it's one of the occupational hazards of looking like that when you don't have a nose and you don't have much of a nostril either, do you, sweetie? It means that you can't get enough air in. Can I have a listen to your chest first, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, her heart sounds nice and clear, doesn't it, sweetie? But that's after I take into account all the huge amount of noise that's coming from up here. It's like she's snoring while she's awake, which is clearly not normal. There is a real rise in the popularity of flat-faced dogs. Therefore, a lot of dog-owning public and people that see them on the street go, oh, it's normal for them to make that much noise, and it really isn't. And certainly in Ethel's case, any point when she's at exercise, she's going to struggle to get the amount of oxygen she needs into her system, and that can mean that it can become life-threatening. So basically what I think we're going to need to do is to give an anaesthetic back at the practice in Richmond, look down the back, of her throat and likely find an elongated soft palate. So it's almost like a blockage, sort of, so she can't fully breathe in or fully Yeah, breathe. and every time she does, it sort of... Catches. ..flaps them. away, it catches, it goes into the trachea, the windpipe as well, which is one of the reasons why she's making so much noise, <laughs> and potentially trim that. And alongside that also, you can see how her nostrils are, are almost little slits. What we need to do is just open them up, and those two procedures together will hopefully increase the amount of oxygen she takes in with each breath and reduce some of the sort of reverberation that you can hear. It's a lot easier for her. And make it much easier for her to breathe. Hey, sweetheart. Well, we're really so lucky that there is a procedure that can help Ethel, because it will make a huge difference to her life, especially when she goes on to a new home where we're hopefully, you know, she'll have some dog friends to play with. And if she can, you know, run around and act like, you know, a dog should, then it will make all the difference for her life in the long run. Not only are you a princess living with Rowena, getting consultations in the park, but now you're going to have a nose job as your first veterinary <laughs> procedure. Get your nostrils done, lucky girl. <laughs> yes, but all for a very good cause. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. This is Ethel. Hi, baby. She's really cute. Wow, she's in pretty terrible condition, isn't she? Bit of a scabby genetic mess, aren't you, darling? Scott is introducing rescue dog Ethel to nurses Reagan and Sam. It won't be a surprise to you to know that she's come from the puppy farming trade. She and a few others were rescued. The three-year-old pug cross is suffering from severe breathing problems caused by genetic abnormalities. 
I can't believe this is still happening, really. And when we know so much about it and people are still putting money into this industry, it's just crazy. So I'll leave you guys to get you ready for surgery. I'll go get changed. All right, cool. see you in a sip. Ethel as a case just really upsets me. Why was she ever bred in the first place? Because the condition that she's suffering with is genetically inherited. She's suffering, so why would you spread that suffering to other puppies? Let's give her the anaesthetic and uh, start having a look down the back of her throat. Because Ethel is a pug type breed, a brachycephalic or flat faced dog, she doesn't have much of a nose. And so a lot of the structures that are present at the back of the nose in a longer uh, faced dog are shunted into the back of the throat. And what you can clearly see now that Ethel's on the table is that her soft palate is sort of flapping in the breeze like a curtain in an open window and going right down and into the larynx. That means that every breath she takes, she will sort of swallow that part of her soft palate and that leads to that incredible noise. So as soon as we tube her, you'll find this no noise will go away. And there, the sound of silence. Okay, good girl. So let's get her next door and get started. The procedure I'm about to perform on Ethel is basically the shortening of the soft palate, but also performing a alar plasty, which is basically widening of the nostrils. So what I need is for you to hold the soft palate out the way. So yep. I'm gonna place two stay sutures in. You hold these two sutures and then you can lean on me for support. <laughs> and I'll then trim the soft palate accordingly. Cool. Get you to on either side. Yep. Like that, that's it. So there's the soft palate, that's the bit that's going down our little girl's throat, and that's the bit that I need to trim. If you give that quite a bit of tension, yeah. you have to put your elbows on my shoulders, it's absolutely fine. Okay. There we go. Oof. A bit of disgusting sewing smoke, and that's a very chunky piece of soft palate. What you can see is by removing that flap, you've now got an open airway because yeah. you can see that that is basically like trimming the curtain so the curtain's not going down the window anymore. The window is nice and open. You're getting lovely airflow. <laughs> so I'm just going to over sew that. If you just release now, and we'll have a little look. Wow, that really is such a difference. Yeah, actually you can see a larynx. Yeah. Good, okay, so that's part one. So now we're going to do something called an aloplasty, which is changing the shape of the nostrils. In this case, I'm doing that in order to increase the nostril size and therefore get more airflow going into her nostrils, more oxygen, therefore she should be able to breathe quieter and exercise better. See how much that's opened up. Here we go. There is Ethel's new nose. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel's new nose. <laughs> Mm. And not a bad looking one at that. It is a lot bigger, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Let's wake this girl up. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Hello, baby. Hello. Guinness Book of Records for that tongue. Look at that. You can lick your own forehead. <laughs> like, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> but listen to you. Mm. I can... can't hear anything. Exactly. That's my point. Yeah. What's incredible about this particular procedure is that literally straight after the surgery, you will see or rather hear a massive difference and this dog should hopefully breathe a lot quieter and a lot easier. Have a little nap, start organising that spa treatment. Yeah, lovely bath for you, I think. Yes, before you head off. Ethel is recovering well from her throat and nose surgery to correct her noisy breathing. Come on then, let's get you buffed. There's a good girl. Okay. Here you go. Here you go. You give it oh, you are here. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Nurse Jess and practice manager Maz are now going to give the little rescue dog some much needed TLC. Is that nice? Is it? Oh, thanks. Ethel's responding really well to all the affection and attention. I think she's really coming round to us all and getting used to a better life compared to what she came from. You better get used to these, because once you get out and about in the park, bet you're one who's going to run in the mud, aren't you? You're going to find the muddiest puddle. We thought it'd be really nice to give her a little treat, a little bath, smell a bit nicer, make her fresh and beautiful already for her new forever home that she's getting to go to. 
There we go. Oh, that's all right, see? It's nice. Upstairs, Ethel's foster carer, Rowena, has arrived to collect her. Yeah, I'm so excited to get her home. Not only for us, you know, we get to see how she is and, you know, play at home and see how she's doing, but I'm um, very excited to um, meet her new potential home and hopefully they'll be taking her soon. Hello. Here she is. Hello, little one. She's like, who are you? I can barely recognise you with your new friends. Mm. Oh, I know. Hello. So she's done so well since the surgery. Not only has it made a massive difference, as you can hear, to her breathing and that she's not making hardly any noise now, which is wonderful, but also transformation in her personality. Like she's really come out of a shell really? just That's amazing being with us for it. such a short period of time and you're really getting a bit waggier and a bit happier and certainly breathing better. So That's emotional so and physical results. So yeah. Well done, Ethel, and well done all of you. I really feel today is the start of a new chapter for Ethel. She's had a terrible start in life. It's literally had her puppyhood robbed from her. She hasn't had access to the great outdoors. She hasn't had medical treatment. She hasn't had love. And now we've been able to treat all of those particular issues and work on her shyness and her emotional side. And hopefully now she'll be a happy, healthy, well-adjusted dog that can go off and enjoy life. I couldn't do anything about the tongue, however, because she has a massive tongue and a tiny mouth, so she'll always have her little tongue tip, won't you, sweetie? But hopefully now everything is as good as it can be for her to find a new home. It's amazing. That's so exciting. I'm sure she's very excited too. Probably don't realise it now. <laughs> All right. You're not going to want to leave. Bye, <laughs> See you later, Owen. Thank Take you so care. much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, girls. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Kate, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen for more great content. And for free, exclusive, never seen before Bondi Vet stories, you can sign up to bondipet.com, and you can do so via the link in the description.